Welcome back to the channel. I'm Steph Jackson. I'm a mother, wife, and I'm a full-time caregiver for my mother who has dementia. If this channel seems like it's helpful to you, please hit like and subscribe down below so I can continue to make videos just like this for people like you. I want to talk today about a topic that I get asked a lot about when I tell people my story. Probably the number one thing that people ask me is, why hospice? Why now? Stay tuned to the end of this video. I have some resources for you that can help you assess your loved one to see if you're ready to call hospice. So calling hospice and having that support come in is probably one of the most difficult decisions that many caregivers have to make. One of the biggest reasons why I called hospice was because I felt really overwhelmed. My mom needed a lot of help with basic needs. We're talking, you know, she needed help fixing herself food. She couldn't work the microwave. She needed help getting dressed in the morning. She couldn't figure out what to wear. It was too overwhelming for her. She needed help with going to the bathroom. And I got to the place in my journey pretty quickly where I realized that this is a full-time job. Being by myself and not having a whole lot of family around really puts a lot of the pressure on me to do the caregiving for my mom. I think that happens a lot. I think there are probably a lot of people out there. Give me a shout out down below in the comment section if you know, you've know found yourself as the primary caregiver and, and tell me a little bit about your situation. Being alone and, and kind of feeling isolated and not feeling like I had a whole lot of support was one of the biggest reasons why I picked up the phone and I called. I get a lot of people who ask me, how does the whole process work with hospice? I can only speak from my experience with my mom. She was hospitalized for dehydration. At that point, I was able to step back from the situation because she was staying in the hospital and I, I had a moment to breathe and I had a moment to think about the amount of work and the amount of stress and the physical, emotional, mental impact that it was having on me. And it really was sort of an aha moment for me realizing I probably could use some help at this point. And the attending doctors had said, wait until you see her primary and have the primary fill out the paperwork. Well, she didn't have a point, an appointment with her primary for another two weeks. I wanted help before then. So I kind of took the situation into my own hands and I ended up doing some research on my own. So I did a web search, believe it or not. I looked up hospice programs in Orange County. You know, Yelp popped up. <laughs> of all things, right? And there were some reviews and some comments on there, so I just went through all of those and made a decision to make a phone call to OC Hospice. When I called them, I just explained the situation and I said, what do I need to do to see if my mom is ready for this next step for hospice? Within 24 hours, they sent out a hospice nurse to the hospital to do an assessment. Hospice delivered the hospital bed and all of the supplies that she needed that very night. And honestly, pretty impressive with how fast that they moved in supporting my mom and making sure that she had what she needed when she came home. So I just, I basically, I knew that I needed some support and I was just searching for any resources out there to help me with this journey. Second reason why I think I called was probably because once my mom was diagnosed in January, there was a rapid deterioration of her health, physically, mentally, emotionally. We really saw a lot of changes in her pretty quickly after that diagnosis. And I think maybe some of it was psychological, hearing that she had dementia and knowing that it is a terminal disease, that she can't, there's no treatment. We knew that this was terminal and we knew that she was not gonna recover from this. So her neurologist was pretty blunt. And at first I didn't like her bluntness, I thought that it was she was kind of rude. But now that I look back on it, I actually really appreciate that she was so forthcoming and honest and open with the prognosis for my mom. In, in my father's situation, which that was about five years ago, he had throat cancer, and we didn't really get a prognosis from the doctors until the very, very end. He went through all the treatments. He went through chemo, he went through radiation, he had to have a trach put in, he had a feeding tube. It wasn't until he got a really bad infection, which happens a lot with cancer patients, that the doctors asked for a family meeting. And at that point they said, 
he's not gonna make it. And they asked us, would you, would you like us to call in hospice? So it happened really quickly with my dad and he was only in the hospice program for a couple of weeks. I think that's really common. I think a lot of families wait until the very end where they're not told up front by a doctor what the prognosis is and so they don't know to call in hospice. In my situation with my mom, getting that diagnosis and knowing the prognosis for the future allowed me to maybe come to terms a little bit more quickly with the idea of calling in hospice. I think I think another really big reason for me for calling hospice was that I'd been through it before with my dad. Hospice, when we hear that word, such negative connotation, you know, you go to that worst place where you it, it's terminal at that point. That person is dying, they're not gonna make it, they're not gonna survive. I felt that way when I first heard that word with my dad. You know, it was like that gut-wrenching, heart sinking feeling of this is it we're at this point we're calling hospice I, there wasn't the stigma attached to it for me i knew what hospice was capable of providing in terms of the support and i knew that i needed it i will say that it is a big decision to make to call in a support service like hospice and for a lot of people it's not just one sole person making the decision like my situation i was the one who was in charge, I'm the one who's here, I'm the one caring for my mom, so it really wasn't my decision. I didn't have really other family members who were, you know, maybe in different places than I was in the thinking about calling in hospice. So for a lot of families, it's a family decision. There's more than one person involved, and if one person is hesitant, resistant, or hasn't really gotten to that place of acceptance, I think it becomes a really difficult conversation. I mean, I think about it and at the end of the day, you know, it, it's it's not easy. It's not an easy call to make. Being the caregiver, you are responsible for making those really difficult decisions for your loved one. You've got to step back and look at the big picture and consider your own health and what you as the caretaker need. I think sometimes we forget that our own health is sometimes compromised because we give, give, give and don't have that support. Also get asked, you know, what does hospice do? Can you tell me more information about what, what services do they offer? The majority of my mom's medical equipment is taken care of by hospice. So she has a wheelchair, she has a couple different walkers, a hospital bed, oxygen tank. They pretty much take care of those supplies for you. We also have um, an LVN, which is a licensed vocational nurse. She comes in twice a week and helps to bathe my mom. There's also a caseworker. She is the lead nurse for my mom and she visits once a week to check my mom's vitals, to kind of get an update on her eating. We also have a social worker who comes to visit us about once a month. And the social worker always has really great references and resources for me. At one point, he brought different pamphlets and brochures that went over information on how to talk with my daughter about what, my, what is happening with my mom. You know, it's not an easy journey that we, we're on here and nobody said it was gonna be easy and, and I think it's only gonna continue to get more difficult. I think the really important thing to remember is support is out there. You just have to be willing to take it. At the end of the day, I mean, I thank you for tuning in and for being a part of my journey and I hope that my videos and my blog are helpful to you. As always, stay strong, stay grateful, and stay present. I'll see you next time.